everybody, it's Brock, and we got a brand new episode of All About. Today, we aren't learning about a fish nor a coral, but a creepy little creature that might be roaming around in your tank at night and you don't even know it. It's a bristle worm. We're going to be learning about what they are, how they got into your tank, and should I let them stay or should we get rid of these guys? A bristle worm is going to be a hitchhiker that 90% of salt aquarium hobbyists will deal with eventually in their tank. These worms are going to have these bristle-like spikes sticking out from their skin, which they get their name from, and they also will use them as a defense mechanism from predators. They search for leftover food, perished fish or inverts, even detritus, and many other materials that would eventually just decay and become ammonia in the tank. So really, a bristle worm is a part of your cleanup crew. They are nocturnal, so you'll really only ever see them at night. Or if you were to remove a settled rock, bristle worms will come piling out of it. Bristle worms can grow up to 24 inches in some cases, but usually most are going to be as small as the end of your pinky to about 6 inches. It is important to know which type of bristle worm is in your tank because one can be harmless to your fish, but another one has been known to chase after fish in the night, and these are fire worms. Fire worms are going to be a lot thicker in width, and will also have a much brighter red coloration, and the bristles tend to stick out on the left and right side in bunches. While bristle worms will tend to be a more tan, orange, and black coloration, and a lot skinnier. Fire worms are also toxic, so beware of the bristles as they can leave a very powerful sting, so handle with care if you're trying to get one of these out of your tank. So how did these critters even get in my tank? Bristle worms are a very common hitchhiker that can hide deep in the crevices and holes of live rock. So if you've ever bought live rock at the beginning of cycling a tank to help, that is a very easy way to get them in. They can even come from adding new corals to your reef tank though. Getting a rock covered in zoas, or you got a group of mushrooms that you really want that's on this holy frag, look out because they can even be deep inside those rocks too and you won't even know it until you put it in your tank and then the next night, they start crawling out and they'll end up in another rock. So when should I really be worried about bristle worms being in my tank? If your tank is to run out of things for the bristle worms to feed on, they will begin to look at other things to eat. Probably the worst case I ever ran into with bristle worms in my own personal tank was buying a small clam and placing it in the center of my tank. Thing looked beautiful, bright blue, opened up great. The next morning, I woke up and there were tons, I mean tons of worms covering the entire mantle. Literally all I could see was the bristle worms. There was no clam left. They had devoured that clam just in the night. Like there was no recovering coming back. It was a clean clam shell by the morning time. So it really sucked, but the issue was there were so many in the tank that whenever they started searching for things to eat, they didn't have anything to eat. So once I added that clam in there, they basically saw that as a beautiful snack for them to go after. So what are the best ways to get rid of these bristle worms in your tank? Go the natural route. There are many fish and inverts that eat bristle worms as a natural part of their diet. Some of these are going to include the coral banded shrimp, arrow crabs, dotty backs, bird wrasse, melanaris wrasse, sunset wrasse, I've even seen six line wrasse go after them. Really, a lot of them from the wrasse family will do amazing, and then some of those inverts do a really good job too. I personally, whenever I ran into this issue way back when, I went with a coral banded shrimp, and they did amazing. I haven't seen worms since in my tank. He ate a ton of them, or either just had them so scared that they wouldn't ever come out again. The only problem was eventually I did run into an issue with the shrimp itself. They became very aggressive towards my fish, so I ended up giving them to someone else that was having a bristle worm issue. So sometimes you can run into that, especially with some of the other fish, because since these natural predators do go after the worms, a lot of times they also go after your inverts as well. So be careful who you go with. Realize what's in your tank right now. You know, if I have a cleaner shrimp, that I really love. I don't want to be putting a huge banana wrasse in there to go eat the bristle worms because he will probably see that shrimp as a snack too. So just be aware on which one you're actually going to put in there. There are also some manual ways to get rid of them. One way is setting up a trap 
This can be a homemade way, or I think a few companies actually make one that you can buy. You basically need to go into a hole that they can't get out of. And once they go into that hole, you can basically tease them with a piece of shrimp, you know, some kind of food in there that'll entice them to go into the hole itself. I think we usually would just build a quick trap door tool out of a Coke bottle. So it doesn't have to be anything fancy. You can cut one in half, flip it, and stick it inside of each other. And that'll give a nice little hole for them to go into and one that'll be pretty hard for them to get out of. Another way is going to be catching them at night with some prongs and a flashlight. Leaving a piece of shrimp tied to a rock at the corner of the tank will be a great way to entice them because once those lights go out for a couple of hours and you come in there with a flashlight, I can promise you those bristle worms are going to have come out of the rock, out of the sand, and they're going to be munching on that shrimp so you can get in there and pick them off with your prongs and get them out of that tank. Bristle worms are much like hair algae. It's more about keeping them under control rather than getting them extinct into the tank because you're not always going to be able to get every single one of them because they are so small and are so good about getting in these tiny, tiny little crevices of the rocks that you're not always going to know if you got all of them or not. A couple bristle worms in your tank will not be an issue, but if you end up with 30 hungry bristle worms in there, you will experience some issues, which is probably the main reason I had that problem with the clam is I ended up with so many in the tank. They ran out of things to eat. One thing to remember is if you are getting them out with the prongs, you need to get the entire worm out. If you end up splitting one in half or breaking a piece off, the other end will usually survive because of their segmented biology. They'll just keep growing. It's crazy. Be very careful with your hands against the bristles because they can stab into you just by brushing against the worm very easily. These spikes can be very hard to get out as they're much like fiberglass getting on your hands. So please, please wear gloves, whatever you have to do. Be very careful around these spikes. And that pretty much concludes the all about bristle worms. Main things to take away is know what's in your tank. If it's a bristle worm, it's usually not too bad. It's going to be harmless. They're not going to chase anything. But if you do start looking at some Google pictures and you think you do have a fire worm in your tank, you should really try to get that guy out of there because he will actually chase your fish down. Also, if you have abundance of them in your tank and getting them out with prongs is just too much for you, try to go the natural predator route. Get you a fish in there that's really pretty. Dotty backs have a lot of beautiful colors on them. Get a new invert. Those arrow crabs look wild in the tank. They're great for them. I hope you all enjoyed this video. If you have any experiences with the bristle worms that you've dealt with, and how you took care of them in your own tank, please leave it down in the comments below. That's how we all learn from each other to get better and better in this hobby. Hope you all like and subscribe to this channel. Check out my other videos, and I hope you all have a great rest of your weekend.